far north of Sweden, 150 kilometers inside the Arctic Circle. A true survival test, but also a fantastic place to be. need any prizes for realizing that in this environment cold is your biggest problem. This might look like a winter wonderland but at temperatures as low as minus 30 I'd actually be warmer snuggling up to the peas in your home freezer. Last week it was minus 50. But all joking aside in temperatures like these one small mistake, like losing a glove, can cost you your fingers with frostbite, or even worse, your life. My body temperature is 37 degrees, so on a day like today, I've got to maintain a difference between the environment and myself of 70 degrees. It's not surprisingly, my priorities are shelter and warmth. As you can see, this tree is virtually a shelter in its own right, but to make it really snug, it's going to take a couple of hours' work. One thing that's always important in the Arctic is a sharp knife, but perhaps even more important than that is this, an axe. And if it's not sharp enough to do that, it's really not much use. A good tip. Knock the snow down first, unless you want it down your neck when you start chopping. Lots of spruce boughs like this helps to windproof the shelter and it acts as a reinforcement. On top of that, I pile lots of snow, make it really snug. Shoveling the snow on like this, packs it all down, makes the shelter completely wind tight, which means I'll stay warm in there in the night. Despite being minus 30, shelter building is hot work, and you must be careful that your sweat doesn't freeze in your clothes once you stop. It's better to keep cool by taking a layer of clothing off first. This will be my bed, raised off the ground to allow the warmth of the fire underneath me. For the fire itself, I've dug down to the ground. That's to prevent moisture melting in the early stages of the fire and putting it out. But also, to make sure the fire lights well, I need to insulate it from the ground. And for that, I've split some wood. And I'll just lay that in there as a bed to begin with. Lighting fires when it's this cold can be difficult. The secret's good preparation. To start with, I've split some nice dry standing spruce. That burns really well. I've collected some dead, dry birch bark. That'll help get the flames built up to start with, and to make those catch properly, some nice dry spruce twigs. Most important of all, you keep your tinder dry and warm. The best place for that is inside your clothing, and you only get it out at the very last minute. For tinder, I'm using this. This is lichen that I pulled off the trees earlier. Fire is great for morale, but it's important to have enough firewood so that it doesn't go out at the coldest point in the night. 
cutting firewood, that's thirsty work. So before I go to get any more, I'm gonna put some snow on to melt. What I'm using to melt the snow is this. It's a mosquito head net. Always good to have with you. Pack it full of snow and that'll gradually melt and drip down into this cup. If you didn't have a mosquito net, you can improvise this really easily from a piece of clothing. I've even used a scarf before now. In these temperatures, you need a lot of water. If you haven't got a cooking pot, this may be the only way you can get water in a frozen land. Well, that's great. With the fire going now, I've got really comfortable shelter. This fire is a special fire. It gives out a lot of heat, nice warm, dry atmosphere to keep me cosy, and it enables me to dry off any wet clothing. Of course, now I have to think about what I'm in contact with. So on the bed, I put down lots of spruce boughs, and also where I put my feet, because the snow will can conduct heat away from my body 20 times faster than those branches. And that's an important thing. In fact, knowing what not to touch is critical out here. That aluminium shovel I was using earlier, well, the aluminium will con conduct heat away from my body 100 times faster than ice. And just to show you that, a few minutes ago, I cracked an egg on here, and that's it. That's not cooked there, that's frozen. Because the ambient temperature is 32 degrees Celsius below zero. And this is what happens to a banana. It goes as hard as iron. <laughs> you could use it as a tent peg. In the winter, most of the useful plants are hidden under snow, but at least the needles from a pine tree can be cut up fine to make a warming drink packed with vitamin C. Well, a cup of pine needle tea makes all the difference. Warm, tasty drink. Of course, 5% extra effort leads to 50% more comfort. The crew, mind you, they're going back to a heated cabin while I'm stuck here for the night. But that's all right, I'm pretty much looking forward to it. A few things I have to do, though, before I settle in. Firstly, I'll take this tripod down. I don't want anything creating a shadow between me and the fire. I'll build the fire up so it'll burn all night and then I'll crawl into my old sleeping bag. One important thing to remember with sleeping bags in the Arctic is not to have your head down inside the bag because if your breath goes into the sleeping bag, it condenses there and you get cold. The answer is to put a balaclava on and just put up with a cold nose. And it is going to be cold. Nighttime temperatures can drop below minus 50. Moments like this, cold night, your mind turns to some of the tragedies of Arctic survival. In 1942, for example, the B-26 bomber crashed in Labrador. The crew made it to the ground safely then slowly they starved to death. The real irony was they were only an hour and a half to walk from an Inuit village. Because of things like that, instances where people died and they needn't have, survival training has been taken very seriously by the military. While I'm here in the Arctic, I'm going to visit just such a course. <laughs> 